My master, Sauron the Great, bids thee welcome. Welcome, indeed, to another instalment in my occasional series on the Modo particle system. Modo 10.1's shout-out feature is, of course, procedural modelling, but it also has something exciting to offer the particle rigour. Milud, may I present Exhibit A. Long ago, in the seventh age of Modo, I demonstrated how to use a combination of surface particle generator and source emitter to create the effect of modulating particle emission with a texture. Let's see how it worked, just to recap. So in this rig here, we have the plane, which is going to be the source of the particles, and attached to that we have a surface particle generator. The surface particle generator is controlled in the FX section of the shader tree with a flow bozo texture. And so we get particles generated on the surface of the plane. These are static particles, they're not part of a particle simulation. In turn, we can use these static particles as the source for emission using a source emitter, which, if you remember, emits particles from other particles. So this combination gives us the effect of emitting particles controlled via the flow bozo texture, as you can see. Now this technique works, and works reasonably well, but it does have its drawbacks. Let me just change the initial velocity of the particles and replay the simulation, you can see that the emission is happening in all directions. And this is because the particles that have been created by the surface particle generator have no knowledge of the underlying surface. They don't know that it's a plane, it could as well be a sphere or a banana. Now, for a simple surface, we can work around this problem. Let me just open another example. Here we have the same model, but in this case we've applied a particle operator to obtain the velocity of our particle. And I've extracted just the Y component of the velocity and plugged it into this set length operation and the length I'll set it to is the original velocity of the emitted particle. That way we preserve the velocity but change the direction of the particles as they're emitted. We then take the resulting vector and plug it back into the velocity of the particles, remembering that this particle operator is only going to operate on new particles. So let's run the simulation and see what we get. And I think you'll see the flaw in my plan. So the particles are being emitted from the surface and perpendicular to the surface, but we get them going down as well as up. Well, that's easy to fix. Let's have a look at the next example. And here I've simply inserted an absolute value operation to make sure that the Y component is pointing up. And there we have it. Particles emitted from the surface perpendicular to it. Well, that's all well and good, but this plane is a particularly simple example. And what would happen, for example, if I rotated the surface? Well, the particles are still being emitted vertically because we haven't applied that rotation to our calculations here, which determine the normal direction. Now, we could rig that up and make it work, but wouldn't it be nice if we could actually use the surface itself and use a surface particle emitter which knows the normal direction to the surface itself? Just as one final example, let's look at this sphere which has had the surface particle emitter applied to it and we can make sure that our particles are emitted normal to the surface of the sphere because the calculation for the normal direction on a sphere is particularly straightforward. 
Were this to be a much more complicated shape, or maybe we've applied deformers and so on to it, then the problem gets much more difficult and probably becomes intractable. So now we get to the point of this video, which is that with a combination of the texture falloff and a falloff probe, we can do exactly what we want. We can use a surface emitter in combination with a texture and get textured surface emission. So here we have it. Let's run the simulation and see how it works. Excellent. We have a torus emitting particles controlled by a texture. And because we're using a surface emitter, the particles are being emitted normal to the surface. We can modify the scene and everything will carry on working. So for example, I can rotate the torus and the particles are still emitted normal to the surface. I can even rescale it and again everything carries on working as you would expect. So let's break down this rig and see how it works. If I disconnect the particle operator from the particle simulation, then we just get a straightforward surface emitter where particles are emitted randomly from the surface. So the magic lies in this part of the, the rig. The particle operator is set up to kill particles under certain circumstances, and that's where the magic happens. So what we do is we take our bozo texture we feed that into the new texture falloff node and then we sample that using a falloff probe and the point we sample it at is the position of the particle. The result of the probe will be the value of the texture at that point in space and we can then compare that value with a random value from 0 to 1 in order to determine whether or not to kill the particle. We don't need to use a random number, we can use a fixed number, for example 0.5, and we will still get the textured emission. The random modifier is here just to enable us to handle the areas in the texture where we're not at either 0 or 1. So in summary, if the value of the random number is greater than the value of the texture, we will kill the particle. So effectively what we're doing is we're creating particles all over this surface and then killing some of them depending on the texture. Now it's a bit difficult to predict how this is going to behave because we can't see the texture. But we have a solution for that too. What I've done is create an instance of this flow bozo texture and then applied it to the diffuse color channel. And then this material is applied to our torus. In order to see the texture, we'll need to turn RayGL on. And now we can see the areas where we would expect particles to be emitted. So the white areas are where we would expect to see particles, the black areas we would expect to see no particles. And then in the gray areas, we would get particles sometimes, depending on the random number that we generated here. OK, so that's all there is to it, really. We have textured surface emission using a particle operator, texture falloff, and a falloff probe. So I hope that was useful to you. If you're new to the particle system, then I suggest you go back to the beginning of this series, or you could consider looking at my tutorial available from the Foundry website. In the next video I'm going to look at extending this technique into a higher dimension so we can have emission within a volume controlled by a texture. The excitement knows no end. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.